Okay. Hello. Uh, I'm Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And uh, this is our first uh, developer Let's Play of yes. Ratchet & Clank Going Commando. Yeah, if you, if you end up seeing Ratchet & Clank the first one at some point, we did not do that first. Oh, right. Those nasty comments. Right. We're beginning with Going Commando yes. because this was the first game we ever made in our entire lives. Yes. Yeah. On Ratchet One, we were just testers. That's right. And this was the first time we actually got to make the real decisions that impacted the quality of the game. I was a junior designer on this game. I was a junior programmer. I think that was my title, but Could I'm not be. exactly sure. Could be. Sounds right. Yeah. Sounds right that I was a junior programmer. Might have been junior gameplay programmer. They might have gotten even more specific. I'm just trying to give them good, valuable information. I know it's good. No way, dude. I want them to know what the game industry is really, really all about. And you know what it's really all about? Titles. Junior titles. gameplay programmer. That's right. Titles are incredibly important. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's let's get on with it then before yeah. this gets any more exciting. So uh, let's start a new game. Uh, I'm gonna go for new new game. See what's going on. All right. Uh, I think this story was uh, was penned by Mr. Oliver Wade. Yeah, I think so. That sounds about right. Uh, funny guy, yeah, Oliver Wade. Definitely funny guy. I think, uh, um, Oliver Wade was an animator, not a writer. Yeah. He did write the story, but his profession was uh, a lead animator. I think at that time. Yeah, and I think he wrote it with uh, with John Lawley, the animator. Yeah. Multi-talented animators at Insomniac. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Multi-talented. Group of creative people. I think that was all funny guys. All capable of, uh, uh, what was the, what was the catchphrase back then? It was, uh, innovate, not, uh, yesterday. I don't know. That might have been a designer No, thing. no, no. It was, it was down from the top. I see. It was down from the top. At Insomniac, we innovate, we don't iterate. That was it. Is that it? Innovation. Not iteration. Sounds that sounds good. Yeah, it's a good uh, it's a good catchphrase. Oh yeah, so um, so one of the big things we were trying to do in this game was uh, sort of rescue Ratchet from how much of an asshole he was in the first game. Yeah, he was a bit of a jerk in the first game. Uh, so they changed a lot of things about him. You know, they put him in a commando suit. They gave him a different voice actor. I think this is, uh, in the first game, it was Mikey Kelly. He right. was to be the, the, the guy who does it for the rest of the right. series. He wasn't mean to clank all the time. Yeah, in the first game. For no just, reason. Yeah, just kind of a, 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 an asshole. Right, yeah. I, it's... It's a. Uh, I think it's a good change. I think they. I think his personality really started to shine a lot more in these games as they started to go out. And they started to uh, sort of really find their niches apart from each other. Like Ratchet is, is the guy who's sort of always eager to get into it. Right. Clank is sort of the comedy relief Mac Daddy kind of guy. And Ratchet really embraces the hero role in yeah. this game. Like yeah. he's eager and ready to be the hero. And I like that you. Uh, uh, I like that you put that at the part where they're finding out about Deep. all the cool shit they're going to get when they work this with you. Right. So there he is. Oh, all kinds of stuff. Macrame, ballroom dancing. Oh, that was funny. I'm still laughing. Jokes. <laughs> jokes on jokes in this game. Yep. Uh, a note to some of the really hardcore furry Ratchet fans, he still has his tail in this game. Uh, even though he, quote unquote, lost it in Ratchet, uh, deadlocked, it was still under there. I just want to make sure everyone knows that. The furries. All right, here we go. Into the first level, uh, my level, uh, originally designed by Mark Cerny, uh, coded by uh, me, and... Uh, that would be excellent funny. all the way around. Just all the way around. Uh, so, this is the very beginning of level zero. Level zero, yeah. Not so even the, level one. This the, is tutori level zero. the tutorials were always level zero because they were put in after everything else was made. Here's a nice little thing. See those little jet planes out there? Uh huh. This guy right here. Just a little ambience that you know what's going on. The world feels alive. Oh, this guy. Vibrant. Is. You know? Clouds whizzing by. Hold on, these controls just need to these need to change. You were the, you were the one guy who never could get behind the uh, 
inverted it's, camera control. It's wrong. It's just wrong. It shouldn't be that way. I uh, I remember I I was a staunch advocate of the way they were in this game until uh, they put a reticle on the screen and I was with you. Right. It's, uh, I don't know, it's just the way it is. It, uh, everybody at Insomniac loves inverted... Tupac would say. That's right. Everybody at Insomniac loves inverted controls, but I am not on board. Well, you know why you did? Because it's great. Yeah. And you loved it every single time, I'm certain. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, except all the times it was broken, because you, your shit doesn't work I lot. don't, I don't break things. I only make them better. <laughs> Breakables? You didn't try to break Always. You no, know, you gotta break everything, Mike. Were you responsible for those breakables? No, I think, uh, the, because I think this was Greg did most of the breakables oh, in this yeah. game. I think, uh... Yeah, he, he did, like, the slot machines in the New Vegas level. Oh, wait, we can't say that. No, nothing was breakable in this game until Greg came on board, yeah. and then everything was breakable. So thanks to uh, Peter Hastings' corner system. That's right. The breakables. Uh, if I remember... Oh, 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 whoa! Oh, look at that! I didn't even remember that! Went look the at the extra mile there. Look at this! Or someone went the extra mile there. See, this is, this is how I work. Nice subtle ring effect that you don't even really notice, but boom, just wake you up, show you what's up, remind you that I was here. You've always been a, a subtle guy. That's right. All right, let's see if I can make this work because there was a nice little, I think I spent way more time on this than I probably should have. Considering it doesn't work now. This little touch, I'm gonna try to make it happen. See if I can go. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, okay. Flying through the sky. And then he gets There you go, away. another one. Just like, you, like you really believe you're in a plane flying through the sky. Despite the fact that this level is not, in fact, moving. No, right? this is a non-moving level. Everything's but moving around it. You wouldn't know. Un unlike the snow level later on, I forget what it was called, but where, where you were on the truck. On the train. Actually, That's right. Oh, who was it? Was it? Uh, uh, that was Brian Algeyer and Peter Hastings. I think worked on that level. Oh, and they had to make the uh, they had to make the weapons all work. It was a good. huge undertaking. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't have that level because it was a lot of work to make that work. Because uh, if you think about it, like uh, you know, if you shoot a bullet. Uh, and you're moving, you, in order to make it feel like the bullet's moving with the thing. Right. Yeah. It's a huge pain in the butt. I, that might not make a lot of sense to it. So. Try not to die this time, Tony. No, I won't. Mike, you're destroying the illusion that this is our first time playing through this game, <laughs> and we did, in fact, have massive technical problems on did the Did I last just time break the sixth wall or something like that? So, here's the uh, another little bit of interesting trivia. The little blade balls here. Yeah. Simple, nice, simple, crisp, clean enemies. Which I've seen in a lot of games since. Right. Um, actually, about ten different revisions on these guys to make them make them work. And, and uh, by the end of it, they were pretty much the same. Exactly the same as they were. But you know what? A lot of the change was what was actually inside the blade balls. That was a lot of uh, revision. What was inside there. at the start? Um, blades. But different types of blades. Oh. Different types of blades. Actually, they were always blades. blades. Uh, uh, a shout out to Carl Glaive. That's right. Yeah. Another subtle effect up here in the uh, up here in the sky. It's subtle. Make sure the player just you know maybe they don't notice it. Maybe they do notice it, but subconsciously they can tell it's there. You had to make all that stuff rotate too. Uh, that also was probably Greg. Yeah. The big okay. rotator Moby. Uh, we have just the one. Uh, Moby is uh, the, our name for any object Anything in the game that, moves, that does yeah. a thing. Yeah, that's a Moby. Uh, kind of long form for mob or right. Here, you would say in an MMO, here's another subtle in the effect. Of our time. That's right. Here's another little bit of subtlety, Tut, a special touch to make the world feel alive. Ratchet, nice, clean, normal ratchet. Nothing going on there. You take a step outside. Oh, the O2 look, mask. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. That's you know that I think that's that shows an attention to detail. I think I just saw a bug and I'm not gonna try to point it out because oh oh what am I doing? That's the exact same place that happened before. <laughs> I told you not to do it, dude. Alright, we're all right, I'm just gonna speed, plow through this time. Speed just, run through. Maybe you can get through more than a quarter of your own level. No, level I, zero. This, I'm gonna make it happen. You know what this is though? This is more experience. Me going through, yeah. doing more bolts, more experience. We, uh, uh, well, not that many more bolts. Uh, 
after you break a crate, it just throws out. Well, the crates are gone. Yeah. That's a good touch. Yep. You, gotta, you know what? you got to balance that economy. Yep. There was a lot of time spent balancing this economy. Dude, I, I, uh, I think I did the minor setups in this level, too. So if you... So the way we the way we used to do it, I don't think they do this anymore, was if you come back to a level, this, the enemy setups are all a little different. Second time through. Right. And uh, 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 I think I did those in this level. So we're not you know we're not gonna come back and bore the hell out of you, but you know, just little touches, you know. Little you know, little things. A little different if you do a replay. I think I got really lazy though and just sort of made it so there were fewer enemies. This <laughs> or more or something like that. It's like oh now there's swarmers here. But yeah, I mean, that's going to be the biggest challenge, I think, playing through this game, Mike, is uh, seeing all the bugs and uh, not cringing constantly at all the uh, the things that are wrong, or at least that we think it'll, are wrong. It'll be that, and then trying not to throw up when you cycle the camera around like that while you're talking. I have to do something, Mike. You have to make the world feel alive for the oh, viewers. But it hurts. I just want to see. Oh, oh it's a horrible bug. Oh, the clipping? The, the way that those... So this was a frame rate thing. Um, as I'm sure you spent a lot of time. Yeah. That, you know, if you're not drawing it, you want to make it not appear. And, uh, right, like the mountains. So we would put these trigger volumes in to uh, to say to stop drawing certain things. And so the and that one, it wasn't placed well. well yeah. So you, you... Clearly not by me, though. I, no, oh. I probably placed it. Here we I go. Doing most of the frame rate. Uh, oh yeah. So this this is showing sort of how purposely we set these things up. Uh, like it tells you to use the gravity bomb. We have a bunch of guys there. We're trying to teach you that switching weapons is a good idea. Cause right. Because a lot of people don't think switching weapons is a good idea. We had a real problem in a lot of the early user tests getting people to switch weapons because uh, they were just having so much fun with the wrench or you know the, the regular blaster or something. And then later on, when, when the weapons upgrade, we had to do a lot of obsoleting. It was, it was a huge challenge for this guy. Transflexor coil. Nice try. Give my rank God.